In this lesson, we will look at what capability indices are and what they stand for when it comes to the ability of a machine or process to produce characteristics. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. After this lesson, you should know the common terms and contexts of capability indices. And you should also know the different type of capability indices, what they represent and what they are a measure of. Furthermore, you should be able to use a capability index number to assess the extent to which a process or machine is suitable for producing low defect products. This lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we look at the essential terms and relationships for calculating the capability indices. In the second chapter, we then assess processes using the capability indices. Let's start with the essential terms and contexts for calculating the capability indices. The starting point is again the diameter of a piston. The question that now arises is whether the machine or the process involved are capable of producing this characteristic within the required tolerance and with a sufficiently high degree of reliability. In a previous lesson, we explained the terms accuracy and precision in more detail. Based on that, we look at what spread and process location are. Both process properties that play an important role in the calculation of process capability indices. Since these basics are very important, they should be briefly repeated here. USL and LSL stand for the lower and the upper specification limit value of the product characteristic. A machine or a process should now produce parts with a sufficiently high probability that are within the permissible tolerance. In order to be able to calculate this probability, the tolerance, the spread of the values and the process location must be taken into account. Changes in the spread and or the process location can lead to non-conforming parts. The proportion of errors. This means the proportion of a product characteristic outside the specification is abbreviated as alpha. As already mentioned several times, the area under the curve includes 100% of all values. Its relative size is 1. Thus, the proportion of product characteristics that are within the tolerance is 1 minus alpha. The crossing of the limits can be symmetrical, equal on both sides, as shown on the left. Or it can be greater on one side than the other, as shown on the right. One can basically distinguish two capability indices. One only takes into account the spread of the values. The other also takes into account the process location. There are further differentiations in the terms, but not in the basic calculation just mentioned. When calculating the potential for the machine or process, only the spread and the tolerance are taken into account. Here, the tolerance is divided by six times the standard deviation. In the case of the critical machine or process capability, the process location is also taken into account in addition to the spread. The smallest distance from the process location to the specification limit is set in relation to three times the standard deviation. The potential should always be better than the critical index so that you still have a buffer for any shifts in the process location. Different formula symbols are used depending on what is being examined and when the examination takes place. 
you should remember that the C stands for capability, M for machine and P for process. The small k has its origins in a word in the Japanese language, which translated means as much as offset or bias. So it stands for an offset or shift of the process location. So here we see the different formulas in their entirety. As already mentioned, these only differ for the machine of the process in the naming, but not in the calculation. When calculating the critical capability indices, you have to look at whether the process location is closer to the upper or lower specification limit. On the side where the process location is closer to the limit, there is also the more relevant capability index. In an earlier lesson, we discussed the confidence intervals. There we saw how many values are in the range of plus minus three standard deviations, namely 99.73%, or in the range of plus minus six times the standard deviation, namely 99.99998% of all values. And exactly such a statement is also hidden behind the capability indices, as we will see next. So, if we relate the tolerance to the standard deviation, we get the capability index. For example, if the tolerance is six times the standard deviation, you get a capability index of one. 99.73% of all characteristics would be within the tolerance. On the other hand, if the tolerance is eight times as wide as the standard deviation, you get a capability index of 1.33. 99.9937% of all values would then already be in the tolerance and so on. Thus, the higher the capability index, the greater the likelihood that a machine or process will produce product characteristics that are within specification. In this short chapter, I would like to emphasize the essence of what we have just learned. Let's start with the machine and process potential on the right side. A machine or process potential of less than one is unacceptable as it means that less than 99.73% of all manufactured product characteristics will be within the specification limits a level of quality that cannot be accepted. A potential between 1 and 1.33 is problematic because a shift in the process location has not yet been taken into account and could have a significant negative impact. The value should definitely be improved above 1.33. Machine or process potentials of over 1.33 are a sign that low defect production is possible. Depending on customer requirements, there may be different, higher requirements for the capability indices. Demands of 1.67 or 2 are quite common. The same applies to the critical machine and process capabilities. Values below 1 are not acceptable. Depending on when the data was collected and the severity of the characteristic, machine or process capability requirements of 1.33, 1.67 or even 2 are common. They too depend on customer requirements. Examples of how these indices are calculated will follow in a later lesson. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the three most important key messages. Capability indices make a statement about the extent to which a machine or process can produce a characteristic within the required tolerance. Common capability values are 
1.33, 1.67 and 2. The machine and process potential only considers the spread of the values in relation to the specification limits. The critical capability indices also consider the process location. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that, take care and see you next time. Bye!